session. Um, I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York. Let me just shift uh, Facebook out just a little bit. All right. Um, come on in to tonight's live session. It's Monday night. And I'm very excited to be before you tonight for this live session to answer some immigration questions, talk with you about some immigration issues that are also on my heart and mine to speak to talk with you about. As you're coming on board, as usual, guys, say hello, say hello, and give me some hearts, give me some likes. Also, share this with your feed. Hey there, Lorraine. Hey there, Raba. Thank you for being the first one on Facebook to join. Hey there, Natalie, Pauline from Instagram. Where are you guys watching from? Um, someone says, I have so many que so many questions. Get a consultation to, to ask all of your many questions. Okay, we'd be happy to meet with you and answer all of your questions. On tonight's live, live session, I'm going to try my best to take it... Um, to take as many questions as I possibly can, we will be back. I will be back. We, who's we, right? I will be back with you on Wednesday. Okay. And then next week. So let's not sweat it. We'll, we'll, um, you'll get your question answered at some point. If I do not get to your question tonight, you'll get your answers, um, at other times. Also guys, uh, McBean law, we um, are an immigration firm. We handle complex immigration cases. We work with clients nationwide. So whatever state you're in, um, for most immigration matters, we are able to handle it. For removal matters, you'll have to go through a little screening by us to make sure that we could help you with your removal case. But generally speaking, we handle complex marriage cases, complex family cases. Uh, we do removal of conditions, of course, adjustment of status for every for everyone on the business side as well as on the family side. We also help people who are outside of America who are trying to come in but are having a difficult time coming in. So we file waivers for our clients um, abroad and waivers for clients who are here in the U.S. Um, Go on McBean Law's website to see what our services are. There are many. We're almost a full-service immigration firm. We help people in many different scenarios. You may reach out to us at 888-462-4006 or at, at uh, info at mcbeanlaw.com. That's our email address. Um, and then, friends, subscribe to our newsletter, okay? Subscribe to our newsletter and be on the inside to get some wonderful information that we share each week to our subscribers. And welcome to all of those who joined us last week, subscribers who uh, signed on to our email list last week. Now, um, I have a YouTube video that I I filmed today, as a matter of fact, and I'm in, I'm wearing the same clothes, okay, um, in this video. And in this video, I really want you to watch it, and here's why. Um, it's the video about um, every what every immigrant in the United States need to know needs to know about the predicted Trump um, uh, immigration crackdown. Very very good discussion. I think I was trying not to scare you guys because I do not want to scare you about these things because, uh, Trump is not in office yet, but we're inching closer each day. So we've got to talk about these things so that you can prepare yourself in the event guys on in the event that, um, Trump is reelected to office. You've got to be ready and you've got to get your immigration case in order right now. And that's one of the things that I emphasized in that video. But I go into a lot of different policy areas that Trump is planning on doing should he return to uh, office. So go watch that video. It's a great video. And um, let's get into uh, who's watching and where you're watching from. And I'm going to try to take the questions in order. I'm going to start with Facebook, YouTube, um, TikTok, and Instagram. Okay, so I'm just going to do this kind of thing here. And ho I hope that the questions um, will encourage you, the answers will encourage you tonight. Now, let's see what I could uh, do here on Facebook. Good night, good night. Hey there, hey there. Um, thank you for following me since 2020, Terry from Jamaica. Hey there, Denise. Um, if I don't see any questions on Facebook, which I don't see right now, so go ahead and type in your questions. I'm going to jump over to YouTube and I'll just loop back to you guys uh, there on Facebook. Um, so 
uh, the question is this. Um, wish, uh, hold on a second. I'm going to have to shift you guys over just slightly so that I could see this. Um, he's uh, F2B category. F2B is the second preference category um, for uh, green card holders who are petitioning for um, their their adult children, okay, adult son or daughter. So um, wishing they move the F2B final action soon. Do I have any predictions? I really don't have uh, any predictions pertaining to that, um, to the F2B. Um, I don't, I, you know, predict it's hard to predict. There's a, there's, there's a backlog, right? There, there are only certain number, certain numbers of, um, visas that Congress allocate per category each year. What I'm going to do guys, bear with me. I'm going to kind of shift this around a little bit so that I could see the questions a little better here in front of me on my screen. Give me a second here. Let me do this adjustment. Um, hold on a second. Let me. Yeah, there we go. That's much better. So I don't do the predictions. Okay. So, um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. What other questions do you have for me? Um, let's see. Keith says from California green card for my daughter. Um, I'm in California. This, uh, what's your question, Keith? Can you, you have to reframe that because you're just, you know, making uh, various statements there. So go ahead and reframe that into a question, uh, that I could, um, answer. Uh, Dean says it, will it still be, well, is it still possible to file a case against employers abuse if it happened two or three years ago? Yes, you can still, uh, you can talk with us about uh, what happened there. There is a visa known as the T visa that does allow uh, individuals to um, obtain a lawful status if they've been abused uh, at the hands of an employer. Um, uh, there's, you know, there's this new thing that, um, well, it's not new, but Biden sort of brought it back, which allows groups of people to bring their employment claim you know, uh, of abuse and all of that against their employer, but it's, it's very complex. You'd have to do, uh, to report, um, the issue with your state employment, the agency in your state that controls those types of issues involving employment, um, labor disputes, those types of things. And then there's an immigration component that does allow individuals to obtain a work permit. Um, you could speak with us about that if that's, but you know, usually something like that, it's more effective. It's if it's a group of individuals who have been experiencing the same labor abuse, if it's just an individual, then you could talk with us potentially about the T visa to see whether that's a good fit for you. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Jocelyn says, I got an email. My consular interview was expedited. Um, that's, uh, hold on. Why did that, why did that happen? If I didn't request that, I'm not sure why they did. They bumped you up. You is, would that not be a great thing? Um, I would think that that would be a great thing to get an interview sooner rather than later. Okay. Um, let's see. Can I file for adjustment of status for seeker of glory is asking, can I file for adjustment of status for a parent that came through, um, the human Haiti humanitarian parole program? Yes, you can. Uh, if you're a U.S. citizen, you can file for your parent and your parent would be eligible for adjustment of status. How long after, uh, an I-130 interview and approval, will it take to hear back from USCIS about the I-485? Well, it really depends on um, the extent of the background check that USCIS is doing pertaining to your I-485. You can be approved. Your family petition, the I-130, can be approved, okay, because the government believes that you're, it's a bona fide relationship, whether it's a parent-child, whatever relationship or, you know, spousal relationship, they believe it. So they approve it. That's it. That's good. But then the real deal truly happens with the green card application, and they're going to look at a, a lot of different 
um, uh, requirements to see if you meet all of those requirements. So if there's a problem with their review, they take a little bit longer to go through it and make sure that you're really eligible or should be approved for adjustment of status. If you're having, if you experience a significant delay way outside of their, outside of their process in times, then you could speak with us maybe about, um, what potentially could be going on or about whether we should file a mandamus uh, for you to get them, force them to make that next move in your case. How much is the overall cost for adjustment of status filing for a green card? Currently the USCIS, USCIS has its filing fees on their website right now. It's um, $1,225. But if you add the I-130 to the process, it's uh, 1760 in total, those costs, those fees are going up. Um, I really need a consultation with you, but the fee, uh, they, this person has a problem with our fee. Okay. So then what's your question? Ask your question. My, he says my consultation fee is too high. So ask your question on this form. If you're not able to afford the consultation fee. Okay. All right. Let's see what Instagram is saying. Thanks for watching and your patience. Uh, Instagram. Um, let's back up. Anna, I'm so happy to know that you're catching me live tonight too for the first time, or I don't know, you said, I don't know if it's first time or not. Let's scroll up here to see those earlier questions. Can I get a green card if I'm undocumented, but I have a 21 year old kid? Um, it's yes, Nadine. Um, it, you know, how did you enter into the United States? Let's start there with the green card. It's always important to recognize that the first question, first issue is your entry. How did you enter? If you're here in the United States, if you're outside of the United States, well, you say you're undocumented. So I assume that you're here in the United States in this un un undocumented status. How did you come in? If you entered lawfully um, through inspection and lawful admission, then your 21 year old could file for you. What else is going on on the record potentially that could hinder the process? Nadine is something like falsely claiming to be a U.S. citizen. Um, in that case, this type of filing will not help you to get a green card. But um, And also, if you have fraud or misrepresentation on your record and you do not have um, a spouse or a parent, U.S. citizen or a green card holder that can do, um, that could uh, help you with a waiver that you'll need for fraud or misrepresentation, then the filing through the child, the, your, the child won't work. But generally speaking, if you don't have any of those things going on, you should be fine to apply for a green card. Reach out to us. We'd be happy to work with you on that. Okay. Um, my husband has been back in the country for five years now. Okay. The lawyer finally submitted the waivers last year, January 23rd after forgetting to do it. But my question it, with my hardship help get his case approved. Uh, I think what you're asking there is your, will, um, will your heart, if you have a good hardship case, will that help to get his case approved? I, I, I'm having trouble with your question, but if that's, if you have good hardships, so I don't know what happened with your husband when you said number one, that he is back in the country. Um, you know, he's back in the country. Clarify some things there for me. I'm not sure what you're really referring to there, but if it's a hardship case, the government is going to be looking at a lot of different things, factors about you, U.S. citizen, I'm assuming, to see whether you will suffer extreme hardship if your husband doesn't get through. Um, let's see. Okay. So here's, she says, I mean, approved faster with the hardship than I'm having, and our son is having a hard time with this. Again, I don't get your question, okay? Um, does, the extend, uh, does the extension letter count towards 
three years for citizenship when the conditional uh, removal is pending for one year. Okay, so thanks for that question. So this is a removal of conditions case. And with removal of conditions, and let me know on YouTube if I'm too loud because sometimes I get really, you know, boisterous and, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be screaming in your ear. Also, Facebook, let me know. Um, to oops, let me know if um and Sherry also let me know please if uh, the audio is good on um on Facebook. But with the removal of conditions, um the way that it works is that so you're granted the two year and in the third year of being a resident, you can in fact apply for naturalization. Okay. So even with your extension letter, if you've hit that three year point, you can apply for naturalization if it makes sense to do so. Okay. If you have any concerns about these things, speak with us about that. Have an appointment with us. What is the average wait time for an I-601A waiver, which is the unlawful presence waiver? Um, the audio is good on Facebook. Thank you. Um, it's about three years now. We had ours. We had one. It's, that's how long it takes, guys. I, you know, I said we had one. We have other. We have many others pending. Many others pending. The I six hundred one unlawful presence waiver is a huge point of frustration for a lot of people. Um, it's taken about three years now for those to be approved. All right, Facebook. Let's, I'm back. Let's, I'm back to you guys. Let's see. What questions do you have for me? Um, I have a, uh, Denise says that I have a question. If my immigration, if immigration decides to extend your two year conditional residency green card, her, how early before it expires, before they send the extension. So you, so Denise, you actually, the government, believe it or not, they don't, they're not given legal advice, okay? So they, they expect us or you, the applicant, to know certain rules. And unfortunately, many people don't read the instructions or, you know, to know these things. But when when you approach your, within 90 days of your two-year ex, um, green card expiring, you have to take the initiative now to apply for the 10-year, okay? Um they will not uh, automatically extend it without you applying for submitting the I-751 petition with your spouse, or if you're no longer with your spouse or having problems in the marriage, then you can do it on your own with, uh, you know, we would love for you to help for us to help you with that. It's a little tricky. Um, so if I'm understanding your question right, um, that's, that's my answer for that. Um, uh, someone is saying that, uh, I hope uh, that man, that man, <laughs> that man, we won't say who that man is. Someone says, I hope that man goes nowhere around our, our white house. Okay. Williams, I hear you. I feel you. Um, but that man is making great inroads inching closer. It seems to the white house. Hey there, Joe. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, questions, Facebook. Um, what, what is the rabbi is asking, uh, your case is completed. He has the I 751 C the notice of action, um, saying that his case was been approved. What is the meaning of action complete approved for filing on I seven I-797C. seven nine seven C. I'm not sure what that means. I've never seen that in any notices that comes to our office. If that's some sort of language in an app that you're using to track your case, um, then you'd have to contact those people about that. I have no idea what that means. Um, how long it will take when you have been approved for a green card? How long will what take? How long will what take, uh, Camara? Guys, when you ask these questions, what I want you to do is review <clears throat> before you hit enter so that, you know, just read it one more time so that, you know, it, it's, it'll be a little clearer for me. It'll make it go a lot faster. Okay. Um, uh, Pierre is asking, how long does it take for processing of removal? Um, processing of removal. Are you referring Pierre to removal of conditions? Um, it depends if that's what you're talking about removal of conditions, as you know, the government is given this very lengthy extension period now, 
And but they are approving these cases faster than this that what is it, 48 months extension that they're now giving out to people. It used to be 18 months, then it went up to 24, now it's 48. I think it's still 48. Um, but you're, it depends on your jurisdiction and what's going on there. But what on average we've we've been seeing it around eight months. Uh, but again, it depends on the jurisdiction. All right, on uh, YouTube, let's see what questions do you have for me. Can someone um, sponsor? And if I answer your question, give me some hearts. Can someone sponsor or like? Can someone sponsor your green card? if they are not up to date with their taxes? Such a good question. Um, uh, no, they won't be able to. They have to show proof to the government. Um, the government is looking at their taxes and they need to be, they need to be current with their taxes. Um, it, particularly if, particularly, here's the thing, particularly if they are a legend that they are, they meet the standard or the requirement based on their income. Okay. If they're going in with you on this as your sponsor, based on their income, they've got to show some, some proof of their income. And the government is looking for taxes, um, as part of that. Um, so yeah. And I'm just, when I do that, I'm my, I'm just thinking about some other things, but we have a lot of questions to get through. Um, and if I've answered your question before, because uh, I will skip over it, by the way, because I do remember a number of the questions that I've answered over the past couple of weeks. So please don't spam us. Um, Isabella is asking, if I entered the U.S. illegally, can I get a status via marriage? If you entered illegally and you're now married to a U.S. citizen, um, you will not be able to adjust your status. You could still get a green card. It's just that you're going to have to go back home, Isabella, to a U.S. embassy in your home country to finish the process and get an immigrant visa and come back in. And you will, you know, you'll need a waiver as well as part of that process. But um, if you entered illegally, and I filmed a video about this a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago, and it, it's in the queue to be published, it's ready actually, um, that talks about the ways that you can get a green card here in the United States if you entered illegally. And marriage is not one of those several ways that you could get a green card here if you entered illegally. Okay. Good question though. Thank you for asking that. Um, uh, Chevelle is asking, can I get some status? My kids are five and nine. They are citizens. Uh, the answer is no, not by virtue of just, okay, I have a five-year-old and a nine-year-old. That, that alone is not enough to give you a status. You would think that, yes, you should get status because how are you going to support these children, right? How are you going to feed these little ones? And you need to work. You need to, you know, be able to be free. But our government, our Congress didn't see it that way when they set all of this up. So unfortunately, there is no pathway. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you, Imelda, for being here. Kira, Kira is asking... Um, do I know what date the immigration fees will increase? No, I do not know the date other than the premium processing fee. Uh, that's going to go into effect in mid February, the general fee that the fee increase that I discussed with you in a video, I think last week, um, the big fee increase that's coming to you, for, uh, with USCIS, the, our association believes that it's coming within a matter of a few weeks few weeks. That's all I know. Okay. few weeks. Um, well, of course I'll keep you posted on that. Okay. I answered the question about the employer abuse. Um, let's see. Uh, Anne Marie is asking, um, my green card was denied and also the 601 waiver from 2018 can my, I thought I answered this one before, Anne-Marie. It sounds really familiar. Can my daughter refile for me? Yeah, I did answer that. And I, um, if I don't have an immediate relative, 
or a spouse? No, it won't work, unfortunately, Anne Marie, because if you've been, if you need that 601 waiver for fraud or something like that, that waiver in particular requires spouse or um, a parent, okay, U.S. citizen or uh, U.S. citizen or a green card holder, unfortunately. So that won't work. Um, now let's see. Uh, so your cases. So someone is asking about have it, uh, the case was terminated, an old uh, deportation at the BIA. That's great. You're free. You're out of the system. You're no longer under the jurisdiction of the immigration court system. So his case was dismissed or her case was dismissed. Congratulations. That's what that means. You're free now to, if you're eligible for adjustment of status now, then you can bring a green card application to USCIS because jurisdiction has shifted back to them. Okay. Uh, someone is asking, can I apply for a work permit, um, on a pending U visa? Yes. Under Biden, that that's a pos that that's, that's now part of the process. They call it a bona fide determination. They have to reach that point with your case, um, to make a bona fide determination. And if so, you can, um, you can apply for a work permit under the U visa process. Okay. Let's jump over to, um, TikTok. Um, I have to go to someone is at Crystal is asking whether she has to go to her home country to receive her green card interview, or is there any other option? Crystal, usually by default, our government will send you back to your home country um, for this process. There is just a little, a tiny little carve out um, in our rules that says something like this. Okay. The, and I'm just completely paraphrasing, but the point is that it allows you, if you can make a very strong argument about why you cannot go back there, there are some serious circumstances that uh, maybe your life will be in danger or something like that. If you have to be sent back to your home country for this visa interview, then we as lawyers can make that kind of argument for you um, and request that it be shifted to another jurisdiction. Okay, but if you're here, but if you're here in the United States after ho overstaying your visa and you're, you've got your waiver approved and you can now leave for the pro for the uh, to finish the process abroad, you're gonna um, they're gonna send you back to your home country for that interview. Okay. Um, someone says that they, Nina says, I lost the evidence, um, which, uh, which is messages for a chance to apply for a T visa. Did, did, uh, well, it, you know, when you're talking about the T visa messages, emails, those kinds, that's, you know, you're going to need more than that truly to prove that kind of case anyway. So, um, I'm sorry to know that you lost what you believe to be the key evidence there for, uh, that T visa potential T visa case. Um, I have been waiting for Diana says I have been waiting for five months to get an interview scheduled, but the embassy still hasn't done anything. Okay. Um, there's a way to expedite. There's a way to expedite. Uh, once you're documentarily qualified, you could, you know, or even before you're documentarily qualified, you could, you could put in an expedite request, but what, are, what's going on? What, what, what is, what I would say what's going on that you can use as the reason for this expedite request. We could help you brainstorm through that with that, that question to see how an expedite could be, um, could be prepared for you. Okay. Um, Tunis says after USCIS approved my parents case, again, they're asking to file the form I-824. It's still not, the case still has not gone to the NBC. Why? Why not? I don't know what's going on with your, why would they, the question is, well, the I-130 for his parents um, should have been sent to the National Visa Center, and it wasn't. So then the I-824 need, needed to be filed. The reason why the I-130 potentially did not make its way to the NVC is maybe because when it was prepared, it didn't indicate that this individual 
or you know the the beneficiary plans to counsel their process did it does it indicate that the beneficiary plan to apply for adjustment of status at a city here in the US if that's the case the I824 is the form that fixes it and sends that approved notice to the visa center if you continue to have problems with that certainly reach out to us we'd be happy to speak with you about that um my wife's I-130 was approved in October 2021. The case is at the NBC, but the NBC is closed in Haiti. Uh, what can I do? Um, with Haiti, the situation is so severe there that one of the best recommendations certainly is to try to get an appointment at a different embassy, try to get the case moved out of uh, Port-au-Prince. Uh, you, you can work with us on that one, that issue as well. Okay. Um if my American citizen girlfriend has cancer, how can it affect the immigration process if we get married? So if you guys get men, I'm so really sorry to hear that, Fabian. Um, you know, you're here in the U.S. Normally there is a process you could, you know, seek expedite, you know, expedite enough your case if you were overseas and you needed to come here faster to be with her. But um, but it, it, it should not affect your case um, other than... If she's not able to support you financially and prove that she could, she's, you know, she has some income coming in and not to worry if she doesn't have income coming in because of her illness, what you can do is get a joint sponsor. That's really the, the, the only way that this would impact your, her sickness would impact your case. Okay. Again, prayers to you and your girlfriend. Um, Someone says, I have a friend that got a deportation order 13 years ago and never showed up to court. Any way that her case can be reopened and dismissed. Um, not showing up to court um, means that what apparently I would say that the judge issued, if the, she didn't show up to court, the judge issued a, a removal order in absentia without, in her absence. And if that did, when that happens now, um, a request can still be made to DHS to ICE for the reopening of the case, but you, she, the person will really need a very solid reason why they never uh, showed up to court, why they never cooperated with prosecution in those days. But we've seen some success last year, as a matter of fact, with clients who had old removal orders in absentia and the government ICE did agree to join us with the motion to joint motion to reopen the case. So it can work. We've seen it work. It's not the end of the road. That person will also need to prove that he or she is eligible for uh, a green card. There is a pathway to uh, natural to <laughs> a pathway to naturalization um, to the green card. Okay. Someone says, I need a consultation. Okay, come on in. We'd love to, we'd love to uh, meet with you. Uh, or you could have a virtual meeting over the computer. That Guys, it's uh, 9.32. That's how I'm communicating right now. Over the computer. What I mean is Zoom. <laughs> Zoom. So we do Zoom, telephone, and in person at the White Plains office. Okay? Um, when USCIS says your case is take is when when USCIS says your process is taking longer than expected, what does that mean? Is there a problem? Sunflower, sunflower, I, I, I don't want to say that there is a problem. I don't want to you know cast any shadow on your case or any negativity. Um, sometimes it's just a caseload management problem at USCIS. Uh, if I knew more facts though about your case, your situation, then I could say realistically, here's what's going on. Here's what they're doing. They're doing further background check, and here's why. Um, but only if I know more facts about your case privately in a consultation, not on social media, okay? Um, someone says, I'm waiting for an interview. Uh, still no date yet. Um, the 601, how long does the 601 take? The 601 waiver, how long it takes, um, is something that I always, the answer that I always give is it truly depends on the case, truly. And because we've seen some adjustment of status cases with the I-601 waiver process in like two months, three months, 
um, particularly last year when things were so great with immigration. And I'm hoping that this will be another great year before, you know, hopefully we'll see how things go in November, but get your case filed now. Now is a good time. 601, again, depends on the case. It could take anywhere from like two months to um, a year. Um, and if you're here in the U.S., it's a different timetable I've noticed versus if you're overseas and you need a 601 for the embassy process. I, I've seen it work a little faster when you're outside of the U.S. waiting on that 601 to be approved. But, you know, every case is different, okay? Uh, nine years waiting for an asylum interview. I'm desperate. What can I do? Thank you for the heart that you've just placed on my head on TikTok. Um, you can seek an expedite if it makes sense, if you have a reason to expedite it. Um, you can seek an expedite of your, of your case and make sure you're ready to go though. And make sure you have a good asylum case too, because you don't want USCIS to not approve it and then to be placed into removal. Um, because then, you know, it's, it's an uphill battle in court with, um, that unless you're eligible for cancellation of removal in court, in which case you may, you want to make sure that you've been here at least 10 years before you're placed in removal proceedings in order to be eligible for cancellation of removal. Okay. I'm going to shift back over here to Facebook. Um, can you file for your own work permit without an employer or getting married? Um, you can, uh, so it, the work permit is, is something that you'll have to, you can, you can do that if you're, maybe you've applied for asylum. Okay. Um, you know, you can do it that way if you're eligible for asylum, but generally speaking, the work permit application goes with something. It has to be connected to some other type of case that makes you eligible for it. The humanitarian process like VAWA, uh, uh, asylum, you can do it on your own. Okay. Um, now let's see. Someone says, um, what is the current wait time for the I-130 to be approved? Uh, look on USCIS's website on that based on your, um, uh, to see what, what they're saying. Um, did vaccines, Jeffrey says, did vaccines and everything else. Um, I'm married to an American, but it has been a year since we filed. Um, Jeffrey, where are you guys located? Because the time, the wait time will truly depend on your jurisdiction, your location. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I have been a permanent uh, resident for over 15 years. Am I able to bring my fiance over? No, you have to become a U.S. citizen in order to bring your fiance to the United States under the K-1 fiance process. Um, Daniel says a family became, a family became naturalized citizen after 12 years of permanent residence in the U S taking care. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Can we assist or file for VAWA for your cousin? We do VAWA cases. We do VAWA cases for both men and women. Okay, let's go back over to YouTube. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, do I think, do you think they will include legalized and millions of undocumented in this border Ukraine deal? I don't, I don't think so. The senators, some of them have already come out and say, you know, there's no immig real immigration reform that will be part of anything that they're going to do with immigration. And like I told someone today on YouTube, the politics are real. This is a political season. It's nothing's really, I don't think anything real is going to come out of Washington this year because the White House is controlled by Democrats. The House, Repub the House is controlled by the Republicans. The White House opened the borders, okay? The White House opened the borders and the Republicans are saying, well, we're going to we're going to step back. We're not even going to help with this situation. We're going to let it get let it be exacerbated so that we could inch closer to taking back the White House. 
Okay, so this is a political game happening this year. So anything substantial on a policy level coming out of Washington, D.C. this year will be incredibly surprising. Election year politics is messing everything up. In my personal opinion, okay, you see, you give me an opportunity to talk politics and I'm ready. That's really what I, I want to talk about politics, guys. I want to talk about politics. Let me talk politics. Um Ian says, getting back to your questions, Ian says, what can you do if your spouse doesn't want to file for you? Ian, not great situation to be in. And you I absolutely cannot force that individual. But I always say, if they are having doubts about the filing process, let them speak with us or an immigration attorney to answer their questions, to help them to see what this process is like and what to expect. If the person is completely shut out to the idea of filing for you because of bitterness or problems in the marriage, you could still talk with us to see what else has been going on in the marriage. If there is abuse in the marriage, um, if there's abuse, if there's a ne neglect, abandonment, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, you know, controlling behaviors, threats, all of those things make a vow a case, okay? Makes a vow a case that can help you to get a green card on your own. And we analyze these vow cases and, and, and do really well with them. So reach out to us to have a discussion to see if we could help you with you self-petitioning for a green card. It's not fair for you to be here. If you're in a situation like this, guys, if you're in a situation like this, you're sitting at home with a spouse who is controlling you, who doesn't want you to even work, who tells you, oh, I have filed for you, it's in process, and yet you haven't seen a receipt notice come to the house from USCIS, that person most likely did not file for you, particularly if you've never signed any paperwork, okay? So just be be on alert that there's a way that our, our system has created to help victims and immigrants who come to the United States may sometimes feel, um, you know, like uh, controlled by a U.S. citizen or a green card holder spouse, like they have all the power. If you feel this way in your relationship, consider the fact that you could maybe self-petition on your own for a green card, okay? Now, let's see. Um, uh, someone, Ivan, is asking a process in time question here, uh, how long it takes for a green card holder to file for her husband who is out of the U.S. It's about four years now, four years, plus you've got to add the time that it's going to take the U.S. Embassy process to uh, have its, to do its work. Um, okay. Uh, someone, uh, Javier says, Un undocumented person who used to live with a fiance who was an abuser, possible to get residency or citizenship. Maybe if you're... Um, if, if, if you are a victim, if you, if it was like domestic violence, right. If you, ha if you have a case where you can make an argument that that person, you were a victim of a crime. Okay. Victim of a crime. Domestic violence is a crime by the way. So there's VAWA and then there's the U visa way. So if the abuser spouse or, you know, partner is not the abuser partners, um, or spouse, I should say, I got a really, uh, think about that with the, uh, the, um, the U, the U visa. But if you're the abuser, um, doesn't have the status. Okay. Let's say you're married to an undocumented man who abused you. You're not eligible for VAWA, but you could very well be eligible for a U visa as a victim of crime. That's what I, where, what I'm going at right here with this. Okay. So don't, um, don't forget that victims, you have a way out as well. Okay. You have a way out. Um, you're, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, oh, he says, he says one more question. Uh, Let's go to someone who I have, whose question I haven't answered. <laughs> um, says here, Veronica says, green card holder for 11 months, uh, working one year and 10 months. When could I sponsor an unmarried adult daughter? If you're, okay, so you're a green card holder. You could sponsor your unmarried adult daughter at any time, okay? 
Uh, you, you have your green card. You're, you have all the rights and privileges. You can go for it. Okay. To sponsor her. And I'm just going to answer one more question on TikTok and then one more question on, uh, Instagram before we wrap up tonight. Um, let's see. I don't see anything there. Okay. Um, must a VAWA applicant submit a report from a psychologist or psychiatrist when asked for an RFE? Um, you know, if your case is based entirely on maybe some emotional abuse or, you know, um, those kinds of things, if it's not, if you don't have a strong physical abuse case, well, yeah, you're going to need something more to show how this abuse, particularly on the emotional side, how it has impacted you mentally and emotionally and all of that. So, um, I would, I, I strongly, I, I strongly believe in, um, working with different professionals when we're working on a VAWA case to get the type of evidence that we need to convince USCIS that you really did suffer abuse and no one else could tell it, tell it better than a professional like a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Uh, uh, USCIS will not just take your word for it or your lawyer's word for it. They're going to want another type of professional to weigh in on this. Guys, it was really nice being with you tonight. You had some great questions. Um, I'll be back before you on Wednesday night. The time flies really quickly, 45 minutes. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being with me. Don't forget to reach out to us. Uh, for those of you who I said, contact us, contact us. And some people have been doing that and we've been meeting with them. So it's really delightful to meet with you guys share this with your feed. It was wonderful. I love you guys. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.